My name is Bill Bailey. I've been a hydronic specialist for 35 years now. And today we're going to talk about expansion tanks. Why do we need an expansion in a hydronic system? Well, it's pretty straightforward. A hydronic system is a closed loop system. That means we fill the system up with water, we eliminate the air, and now we're going to heat up that water. As we heat water, it expands. We need to give it somewhere to go. Okay, so where do we want it to go? Well, we definitely don't want it to come out the relief valve because every time the relief valve opens and lets water out of the system, we have to make up that water with new water. New water always has air in it, which we have to eliminate and get out of the system. So we create this vicious little cycle. So we don't want it to come out the relief valve. We want it to have somewhere to expand to. And that's what the expansion tank does. As we heat water, it expands. We need somewhere for it to go. So in every hydronic system, we have an expansion tank. The first type of system we had was a steel expansion tank. That tank would be up in the attic and it was an open tank. So as the water expanded, it would rise up in that tank. If it got too high and before it would overflow the tank, there usually was a pipe out the side that would drain off to a safe location so it didn't flood the ceiling or anything else. The second type, and as we got better constructing tanks, we closed that tank. So now we had a total steel tank that had two closed ends with a tapping in the middle where the water and the air could be set within that tank. That air was our cushion. So as that water heated up, it pushed against the air and basically did not go come out the relief valve. Those were the first two systems we had first two tanks. Open tank, so if you're down in the boiler room looking for the expansion tank, you don't find anything down there, start heading to the attic. If it's a later system, look around in that basement, in the crawl space, in the mechanical room, look up to the higher point, you'll see a steel expansion tank. A lot of times it's in between floor joists, attached to the ceiling of that mechanical room. It's going to be in that room somewhere, so look for them. Diaphragm expansion tanks. This is the third expansion tank. First was the open tank, which did its job, but it had its limitations as far as leakage, overflow, and debris coming back into the system. This closed steel expansion tank was an improvement over that because we got rid of any chance for de debris to come back in our system. But we still had that possibility as the system cooled down of the water reabsorbing the air in that steel tank. So then we'll get back in our system. We, we tried to air eliminate it throughout the system. The third system, the third tank was a diaphragm tank. The diaphragm tank was the steel tank basically with a diaphragm put in between the water of the system and the air on the opposite side. So basically we took our steel tank and put a bladder or diaphragm in the middle of it. So now we separated the two. So now, as our system heated up, it pushed on the diaphragm, which compressed the air below. We all have air compressors at home, so that's very easy to do. And then as the water cooled or the system shut down, that would push back up to a point of equilibrium. That oxygen and air could never get back into the system because of the diaphragm. So now we had the bust thing going. We separated the air from the water. We gave the expansion tank to do its job of allowing for expansion so that did not come out the relief valve and we eliminated the possibility of that air getting back into the system. This is what we're using nowadays. There's versions of it. We'll go in one more later, but this is your typical diaphragm expansion tank. In our application here, you see it mounted right here. Be careful with these things because basically to check them, on the bottom you have a Schrader valve. This is the fill port. If you took your test gauge, your air gauge, and hit this two or three times, you would lose all this pressure. If you lost all this pressure, now it can't do its job. It has nowhere for that water to expand to, and it will come out the relief valve. So you don't want to touch it here. Best way to test these is not through the Schrader valve down here. Basically, just take any type of metal object and tap on the side of the tank. You hear here, this is my water side, so it's a much denser sound. 
down here's my air. So right now I know this tank is good. All right, I don't wanna go down here like I said earlier because if, there's not a lot of air in here. But don't start tapping this thing. The only way you can technically refill these is you have to take them totally off the system to repressurize them 12 to 15 pounds or whatever is necessary for that system. So take a metal object, tap on the top, tap on the bottom. My opinion, that's a good tank. I'm going to start looking somewhere else because why is my relief valve popping? Could be dirt under the seat, could be a myriad of things, but it's not the expansion tank. The last expansion tank is the bladder tank. The bladder tank is a larger diaphragm tank, but instead of using a diaphragm like we do in here, we use a bladder or a bag. Inside that bag, we have our system water. Outside the bag is our air cushion and then our steel tank itself. Because they're designed for larger systems, they are heavier to begin with, even empty. So most of the time you'll see them floor mounted. Again, it's just a larger version of the diaphragm tank, but instead using a bladder or a bag, as it's called. So we've talked about four different types of expansion tanks. The first two are somewhat antiquated, so if you have the opportunity to change them out, think about going to a diaphragm or a bladder tank. Bladder tanks and diaphragm tanks both follow the same principle. They have to be sized correctly for the volume of expansion in the system. One thing to remember, expansion is expansion. So if you are looking into a bladder tank because of the volume, Maybe you might want to consider two diaphragm tanks in lieu of one big tank. Might save you money, might save you some code approval ratings. So look into it. Again, expansion is expansion. We got to take care of it within a closed loop hydronic system because we don't want our water coming out the relief valve. <music>